Good morning, four and five-year-old Bible class. So glad to see you today. I'm glad you could be with us today for another lesson in Bible class. So in Bible class, what are we talking about? Our Bible, yes. The book that God gave us, it's so special. Do you remember the song? Let's go. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, Bible, yay! That's right, it's God's special book. Do you remember how many books are in this one big book? 66, you know, don't you? 66, 66, 66 books in the Bible. 66, 66, 66 books in the Bible. Yeah, and we have been talking for a while now about our New Testament. We just finished the Old Testament, but now we're in the New Testament. And there's how many books in the New Testament? 27. That's right. So let's sing them because we need to remember them so we can find them in the back of our Bible. What's the first book? M Matthew. You ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and the letter to the Romans. First and second Corinthians. Galatians and Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy. Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Yay! Why is it so important for us to read our Bible? Why do we need to know what's in here? It's because God tells us things. Yes, God tells us how he wants us to live here while we're on this earth. He tells us about Jesus coming so that he could die on the cross for our sins so that we get to go to heaven to live with them forever and ever. It's so awesome. There's no book like this because this one is from God and everything in it is true. We can believe everything God says to us, can't we? Because he always keeps his promises and he tells us everything we need to know about him and about how he made this beautiful world and how we get to go to heaven one day. All of that is in here. And it talks about people that really lived before we did. So we can learn things by seeing what people did, seeing how Jesus, what Jesus did when he was here on earth. We can learn so much, can't we? So that we can be so smart and not get tricked by that devil, right? He's trying to trick us, but we're not gonna get tricked because we're gonna listen to what God told us to do in his book. That's right. That's the whole story right there. So we get to learn a couple more lessons from God's book, the Bible today. Before we get going, let's sing a song we haven't sung for a little bit. I'm going to lay my Bible down. Are you ready? Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow grow. You sure will. You sure will. So we are going to talk about our New Testament today. Remember how there's the first four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the gospels. Good news. G gospels. Those tell us about Jesus's time here on earth when he came from heaven to live here on earth and he taught the people about God and he showed them that he really was the son of God by doing those that those things that begin with the M M miracles miracles something that only he could do and something that the apostles could do later on 
So we've talked about so many miracles that Jesus did. The Bible tells us about so many. But there, the Bible says there were so many that Jesus did that they couldn't even write them all down. There was that how, that's how many that he did. So, so many. So he could show the people he really was God's son. Remember we saw that Jesus has the power to heal diseases? Like the paralyzed people, the people that their legs didn't work. He healed them. He healed other people with other sicknesses too, without medicines, without hospitals or doctors. Jesus just said the word or touched people and they were healed just like that. So Jesus has the power over sickness. Jesus has the power over, what else do you remember? Storms. Jesus has the power over storms. Remember when he was with the apostles in the boat and they woke him up and he said those three words to the storm, peace be still, and the storm stopped, just like that. So Jesus has power over the storms. Jesus has power over people that have died. Jesus has the power over death. He healed the widow's son and he healed Jairus' daughter, right? He brought them both back from the dead after they were already dead. That's amazing. Jesus has the power over food. Remember, he turned the water into grape juice. Today, he's gonna do another miracle with food. This happened and this is actually in every one of the gospels. It's written down in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all four of the Gospels tell about the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people. That was a really amazing thing he did. He had been teaching the people. The people now are finding out who Jesus is, and there's a whole lot of people that are looking for Jesus and following him around to listen to what he's saying and to watch those miracles. And the Bible says there was one time when there were 5,000 people that had gathered to hear Jesus teach. Boy, that's a lot of people. Here's a little picture, can you tell? Look at all those people. This isn't even 5,000, but there was a lot of people. And they were with Jesus and the apostles, and the Bible said it was getting late. And it was getting towards supper time and past supper time. And so the apostles said to Jesus, you need to send these people away so that they can go eat dinner. And Jesus said, I can't send them away. They're too hungry to leave. We're gonna have to feed them. And the apostles said, how are we gonna get enough food to feed this many people? We're way out here in the wilderness. There's no food out here. How are we supposed to do this? So Jesus said, well, how do you think we should do this? He asked Andrew. And Andrew said, I found a boy that has two fish and five loaves of bread. This little boy had packed a lunch. I looked a little bit like this. Here's his lunch. Have you ever packed a lunch before and had a picnic? two fish and five loaves of bread. One, two, three, four, five. They were like little crackers probably. They weren't big loaves of bread. They were just small loaves of bread and two fish. How many people do you think could eat dinner with this? Hmm, if this was my house, I don't know. I don't even think this would be enough food for me and, and Mr. Roger. I don't think so. I think we would be hungrier than this. But Jesus took this food and he prayed to God and he thanked God for the food. And then he had all the people sit down into groups. And he started giving the apostles food, fish, and bread to take to the people. And you know what happened? There was more and more and more. And there was enough food from this little bit of food to feed all 5,000 of those people. Wow. 
it just kept coming and coming and coming. So that is a miracle, isn't it? We can't make more food, can we? Even if we would like to have some more chocolate cake or a piece of candy, we can't make more and more, can we, by ourselves? No, nope, but Jesus could because he had the power over everything, even food. Wasn't it nice of this young boy to share his food? This boy shared his lunch with those 5,000 people and Jesus made enough for all the people. And you know what? There was so much food that after everyone had eaten, the Bible says the apostles went around and picked up all the leftovers. There were 12 baskets of leftovers. 12. Woo. That's a lot of leftovers. That's a lot of food. Jesus was amazing. He could do anything because he is God's son. So he showed the people again that now he has power over food. So after that, the Bible says that Jesus told the apostles to get into the boat and to sail across the lake. And he was going to go up on the mountain to pray to God. So it was already getting late when they even started having supper. Well, now it's later. But the apostles did what Jesus said and they got into the boat. Remember our boat? Here it is. They got into the boat and they started sailing across the sea. And you know what happened? Another storm came. Oh no. So here they are. And it's storming again. But this time Jesus is not in the boat. He's up on the mountain praying. Well, the apostles were struggling and struggling, trying to keep the boat going. And it was so windy and the waves were so high and it was so dark because by this time it's night. So they were in the boat, in the dark, in the storm. And then they looked over and they saw something walking on the water toward them. They thought it might be a ghost. But who do you think it was? It was Jesus. He was walking on top of the water and he was walking toward them in the boat. And they were so scared and they cried out. They cried, oh, it's scary. Who is that? What is that? Is it a ghost? And Jesus spoke to them and he said, don't be afraid. It's me. And they recognized his voice. And Peter said, if this is really you, Jesus, tell me to come out of the boat and to walk on the water with you. And Jesus said, come on. So Peter got out of the boat and he started walking toward Jesus on the water. Peter was walking on the water too. But then the Bible said he saw the waves and he saw the storm and he started getting really scared and he started to sink. And he said, save me, Jesus. And Jesus took Peter and he said, oh, you of little faith. Why didn't you just believe? And the two of them walked back to the boat and got into the boat with the rest of the apostles. And when they got in the boat, the storm stopped. Whoosh, just like that. Wow. And the apostles said, you are truly God's son. So that was another miracle, wasn't it? Jesus walked on the water and Peter did for a little bit. He believed and he went toward Jesus for a little bit, but then he got scared and he stopped believing and then he started to sink. So Jesus wants us always to remember to trust him always, 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 and never doubt, always trust him. Never get scared. Always walk toward Jesus and he'll take care of us no matter what, won't he? But he won't help us walk on water. That was a miracle. And these miracles don't happen anymore today. But remember why they did the miracles? Why Jesus did the miracles in the Bible? To show people he was God's son. That's right. So that is what happened. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is so strong. My God is so big. 
so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Let's always remember that. Jesus is stronger than anything. Jesus is more powerful than anything. So we always need to go to him, don't we? Pray, and he's going to listen to us every time. And he will help us get through anything. So let's say a prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for our Bible class. Thank you for our marvelous Bible that tells us all about Jesus, all about you. Thank you for telling us all these wonderful things about him so that we can know how powerful you are and we can always trust you. Thank you for always keeping your promises. Be with us and help us to be strong and to be good. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, now we're going to sing one more song because we got some people standing behind me here. Who are these? These are our 12 apostles now. Let's practice that song. Who was the first one that we just talked about that walked on the water for a little bit? Peter. All right, you ready to sing? Jesus called them one by one. Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then came Philip, Thomas too. Matthew and Bartholomew. James, the one they called the less. Simon, also Thaddeus. The twelfth apostle Judas made. Jesus was by him betrayed. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. Yes, Jesus called them. And they all followed him. Good job. Okay, now I have one more thing before we go today. Miss Debbie wants you to do a little project for next time. Are you ready? You want to do a project? I want you to choose one of the miracles that Jesus did and draw a picture of it. If you think about it, we've talked about a lot of miracles, right? We talked about the water to grape juice. We talked about Jesus raising the widow's son from the dead. We talked about Jesus raising Jairus' daughter from the dead. We talked about Jesus healing the man at the pool of Bethesda. Remember, so he could make his legs strong so he could walk again. And remember the man that got lowered through the roof? Yep, but this is the one that Miss Debbie drew. I'll show you mine. Who knows what this one is? This is the one we talked about last week, remember? There was the man that had those evil spirits from the devil, remember? And he went to Jesus, and Jesus cast out. He made those evil spirits leave this man, and they went into the pigs, and the pigs ran down the hill into the water and drowned. That's the one that I drew. Can you draw one too? I hope you can find a piece of paper and just draw one, whichever one you want. And then if you see me, when you come to church services, show me your picture. I would love to see your picture. I'm sure it'll be beautiful. So that's it for today. I hope that you have a wonderful Sunday and I'll see you next time.